very warm welcome to one and all. I'm Professor M.S. Patil, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Martha Vidya Prasarak Samajas, Karmavir Advocate, Babura Ganpadra Thakari College of Engineering. Today, we are going to continue about the design procedure of quarter joint and we will solve a numerical on that. Now, what are the learning objectives of this session? Today we will revise the design process and we will solve one numerical on quarter joint. <clears throat> In the earlier lecture, we have seen the entire design procedure. What are the different failure modes of quarter joint? What are the different parts in the quarter joint? We already know there are three parts in the uh, assembly of quarter joint. One is spigot end, second one is the socket end and the third one is a quarter. Now, uh, depending on the different types of modes of failures, we can develop different equations. Also, we have seen uh, re related to the different notations we were using in the design process of the quarter joint. P will be the tensile force, D will be the diameter of the rods which are to be connected with the help of this joint. D1 is the outside diameter of socket. D2 is the diameter of spigot or inside diameter of socket because spigot is going to fit in the socket. D3 is the diameter of uh, spigot collar. D3 is the diameter of spigot collar. It is shown over here. D2 is the diameter of, uh, the, uh, D4 is the diameter of socket collar. Then uh, the other dimension, A is the distance of end of the slot from the spigot end we can see over here or here we can see this is the slot and this is the distance of the uh, spigot end. So from here to here it is distance A. B is the mean width of quarter. Why we are talking about mean width? Because quarter is tapered from one side and it is straight on the second side. Therefore, the width of the quarter at the top is more, width of the quarter at the bottom is less. Therefore, we are talking about the mean width of the quarter. C is the actual distance from slot to the end of socket collar. So from here to here, it is distance C, which is shown over here. Then T is the thickness of quarter, which is shown in the side view. T1 is the thickness of spigot collar. It can be shown over here. T1 is the thickness of spigot collar and L is the length of the quarter. Now, talking about the design procedure, first we are going to determine the uh, diameter of the rod using tensile failure equation. D is equal to under root of 4P pi into sigma T, where sigma T is the permissible tensile stress. Second, we will calculate the thickness by using thickness of the quarter by using empirical relation. P is equal to 0 0.31 times diameter of the rod. Then we are going to calculate the outside diameter of the spigot based on the tensile failure. So we can, uh, we have already derived the equation. We can use that equation to calculate the value of D2, which is the outside diameter of spigot. Then we will calculate the outside diameter of the socket or the uh, uh, outside diameter of the socket using tensile failure equation. We can determine from here the value of D1. Then we will determine uh, the other dimensions that are the spigot collar D3 and socket collar D4 using this empirical relations. Then we can calculate uh, the dimensions A and C. These are the distances. Uh, A is the distance of uh, the spigot end from the slot and C is the distance of socket collar from the slot. Using this empirical relation, we can determine the value of A and C. Then we can determine the mean width of quarter considering shear failure of quarter. When we are talking about shear failure, when the quarter is uh, tightly fitted into the slot, if it is loosely fitted, then we will go for bending equation. So for, we can determine the mean width of quarter using shear failure tau or we can determine uh, the mean width of quarter using bending stress. So we can select the larger value of this two. Then we can check uh, for the crushing and shear stresses in the spigot end using sigma uh, c and tau. Similarly, we can check crushing and shear stresses in socket end also. Crushing and shear stresses in socket end using this equation and if uh, sigma c and tau 
in this pivot end and socket end are uh, less than the permissible stresses then and then it will be safe otherwise we have to increase the diameter of the rod and uh, iterate the process again and finally we can calculate the thickness even of this pivot collar using this empirical relation and we can provide the taper on the cutter as 1 in 32 1 in 32 means in the length of 32 mm uh, the uh, width of the quarter will decrease by 1 mm. That is the meaning of the taper, 1 in 32. So this is the entire design process of the quarter joint. So based on this process, we can solve a numerical. Talking about the numerical, right? Now it is in this numerical, it is required to design a quarter joint to connect two steel rods of equal diameter. Each rod is subjected to an axial tensile force of 50 kilo newton. So we have to design the joint and specify its main dimensions. The material of the two rods and the cutter is plain carbon steel PCS of grade 30 C8. What is the meaning of 30 C8? 30 divided by 100, that is 0.3 percentage of carbon and 8%, 8 divided by 10.8 percentage of manganese. SYT for this particular grade of steel 30 C8 yield stress in tension SYT is 400 Newton per mm square. The factor of safety for the rods, spigot end and socket end is specified as 6 while the, cot, while the factor of safety for the quarter it is taken as 4. So based on this particular data we have to design the uh, quarter giant. So first we will uh, derive uh, the data which is given in the equation preliminary data. So what is given? The force tensile force acting P is 50 kilonewton, so 50 into 10 to 3 newton. Then it is given the material and SYT. So SYT is 400 newton per mm square. Factor of safety for spigot uh, socket and the rod is 6, while for uh, the quarter is 4. FS is factor of safety. So after writing the given data, we will go for calculating the permissible stresses. So next step is to calculation calculate the permissible stresses in the rods spigot socket and the cotton so for first permissible stresses for rods spigot end and socket end first we will calculate tensile stress SYT upon factor of safety then we can calculate crushing stress or compressive stress SYC upon factor of safety now in this equation it is uh, in this numerical it is not specified that whether uh, yield stress in compression is equal to tensile stress or whether we have to use some other relation. Uh, you can use SYT is equal to 1. Uh, SYC is equal to 1.2 SYT, 1.5 SYT, 2 SYT. It is permissible up to twice SYT. So here SYC is taken as twice SYT. It is not given but we are assuming this because uh, in uh, uh, steels like 30 C8, SYT is never equal to SYC. So we are taking it as twice SYT upon factor of safety. You can assume the SYT is equal to SYC also, but thus that assumption would not be uh, very much uh, right. But you can go for that also. So SYC is equal to twice SYT upon factor of safety. You can calculate sigma C and you can go for shear stress, uh, SSY upon factor of safety. Uh, on a regular basis, you can consider tau as 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety. This is maximum shear stress theory, 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety. So calculating uh, permissible shear stress, then we can go for the permissible stresses for quarter. Because factor of safety for quarter is different. So we can calculate sigma t SYT upon factor of safety. Again, here tau is equal to SSY upon factor of safety, 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety, you can calculate sigma t and tau for quarter, sigma t, sigma c and tau for the rods, spigot and the socket. So after calculating the permissible stresses, we can use the different equations given in the design process and calculate the various dimensions. So calculation of dimension. So first thing we have to calculate the diameter of the rod based on the tensile failure equation we can calculate the diameter of the rod using the first equation and we can calculate it as 30.92, we can round up it to 32 mm. 
then second thing is to calculate the dimension of the spigot spigot end diameter of spigot end so for that we will need the thickness of the cutter we can be which can be calculated using the empirical relation 0.31 times 32 we can get 9.92 and we can round it to 10 mm then we can go for calculating the diameter of spigot end so it can be calculated as tensile failure of the spigot end uh, sigma t using sigma t uh, as the criteria we can calculate using this particular equation the diameter of this we got and putting all the values we will get a quadratic equation and then solving the quadratic equation we can determine the value of d2 which comes out to be 37.91 and we can round it to 40 mm then we will go for calculating the diameter of the socket and outer diameter of socket d1 can be calculated using tensile failure equation again putting all the values we are knowing all the values except d1 we will put the values and we will get again a quadratic equation in this particular form solving the quadratic equation we can determine the diameter outer diameter of the socket as 52.04 we can round it to 55 mm then we can calculate the uh, thick, uh, the diameter of spigot collar and socket collar using the empirical relation d3 is equal to 1.5 d and d4 is equal to 2.4 d we will get these values then we will go for next step calculating the distances a and c a is the distance of the spigot end from the slot and c is the distance of socket collar from the slot using this empirical relation we can determine the distances a and c then width of cutter width of cutter can be determined using two criteria one is shear criteria we can use this equation we will get this this value again we can use the bending stress criteria using this equation again we will get this value so we we have to select the larger value this 50 mm or this 50 mm as in this case it comes out to be equal so the final answer will be 50 mm but if they are different we have to select the maximum value we will calculate the uh, mean width of the quarter then we will go for checking of crushing and shear stresses in spigot end and socket end first we will go for spigot end using first criteria of crushing stress we got 125 newton per mm square while the permissible value is 133.33 so as sigma c calculated 125 is less than 133.33 so the design of the spigot end for crushing is safe again we will go for checking for shear stresses using the equation of shear stress we will we, we get this value 26.04 this 26.04 is less than 33.33 which is permissible value again the spigot end design of spigot end is safe in shear similarly we can go for uh, checking of uh, crushing and shear stresses in socket end again using the equation of sigma c we got 125 newton per mm square and uh, we, this 125 newton per mm square is less than 133.33 so it is self in crushing and we can go for calculating the shear stress we got the value of shear stress as 26.04 again it is safe because it is less than 33.33 newton per mm square so the socket end is also safe in crushing and shear. Finally, we will go for the calculation of thickness of spigot collar T1 as 0.45D. We got this value and we will provide a taper of 1 in 32. So we have calculated all the dimensions of the uh, socket and spigot joint that is cutter joint. Uh, after calculating the dimensions, we have checked the safety against crushing and shear also and we found it to be safe in crushing and shear so this is the complete numerical of a quarter joint we will see one more numerical of the quarter joint again in this numerical what is given two rods are connected by means of a quarter joint the inside diameter of socket inside diameter of socket means outside diameter of spigot and outside diameter of socket collar are 50 and 100 mm respectively. The rods are subjected to a tensile force of 50 kN. Quarter is made of steel 38 SYT 400 Newton per mm square and factor of safety is 4. The width of the quarter is 5 times its thickness. 
So first we have to calculate width and thickness of the cutter on the basis of shear failure and width and thickness of the cutter on the basis of bending failure. So here we have to design the cutter only on the basis of shear and bending. So again, we will work out what is given. So what is given? SYT is given as 400 Newton per m square. Factor of safety is 4. The tensile force is 50 kilo Newton. D4 and D2, diameter, inside diameter of socket, which is also equal to diameter of swigot. D2 is given and D4, outside diameter of the socket collar is given. 100 mm and 50 mm. Then we can go for calculating the permissible stresses. Sigma T is equal to SYT upon factor of safety and tau is equal to 0.5 SYT upon factor of safety. So we got sigma T 100 and tau 50 as the permissible stresses. Then we will go for first criteria that is shear stress in cotton. So width and thickness on the basis of shear failure we will calculate. B is equal to 5T which is mentioned in the numerical. So we will go for calculating using tau is equal to P divided by twice BT. So we got this thing T we got 10 mm and B we got 5T is equal to 50 mm. So these are the first answers. Thickness of cotter and width of cotter based on shear failure. Then we will go for second criteria that is bending. We can calculate width and thickness of the cotter on the basis of bending. D4 and D2 are mentioned. So using the equation of bending stress sigma B, this particular equation which is given in the design process, we can calculate the value of T again, putting T is, uh, B is equal to 5T. So putting all these values, we can get the value of T is equal to 12 mm and B is equal to 60 mm. Now here it is not specified that we have to select the value of width of cutter. We are just told to calculate the dimensions based on shear and based on bending. So on shear, the answers are T is equal to 10 mm and 50 mm. Thickness is 10 mm and width is 50 mm. And on the basis of bending, thickness is 12 mm and width is 60 mm. So these are our answers. So we have seen again the design process of the cotter joint and we have solved uh, two numericals based on the design process. Uh, that's uh, okay for now. Uh, in the next lecture, we will go for the design of the knuckle joint. Uh, thank you for uh, listening the lecture uh, patiently. Thank you. Thank you very much.